This is ugly as sh That's why we're gonna talk about it today and what you can do about it. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption about new stuff from iFixit. We should have a new graphics card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere, but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Minnow. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones, or just get them for yourself. Every single 40 series graphics card that uses the 12 volt high power connector uh, is gonna end up coming with an adapter like this. And depending on the size of the card, it's gonna be probably either a two, three, or four. Um, 3090 Ti had a three, 4090 has four of them. I bet you anything 4080, I bet you 4080 will end up having two, maybe three. Um, but this is what you would essentially get. Now imagine trying to cable manage that. That's freaking ridiculous. This video today is not about the uh, doom and gloom, gloom and fear mongering of your power supplies catching fire and trying to kill you. Um, this is more or less about aesthetics. So what Corsair has sent us with the HX1500i is their replacement cables that are designed for any of their power supplies using a type four uh, piece or connector for their power supplies. Now, it's interesting because of the fact that the adapter says, hey, you should be using four. One, two, three, four power cables to power it. However, Corsair says, nah, bro, you only need two. It terminates to two of them. See? Now, first of all, the cables that are in here, I'm pretty sure are solid core. If you can't tell by the way it holds its shape, watch. No matter which way you bend it, it stays because of the fact that it's more than likely not a stranded cable, it's just a solid core, almost like a Romex, like a small Romex. So I think that's one reason why they're able to just run two PCI Express uh, Type 4 connectors on the power supply end, terminating to the 12 volt. Now one of the things that we've talked about here is the fact that you see it even says right on that connector, 600 watts, so that's the max rated uh, PCI SIG or the organization that sort of does the standard, that's the max rating of the cable. But you'll notice the sideband, right? That's the little extra plug that doesn't exist on the 30 series card, albeit outside the 3090 Ti, because it did have it on there. Um, you can see that only two, I'll separate them, only two of the four pins are occupied. And if we look, both of them are on opposite ends of the PCI Express cables on the power supply end. So the reason for this, I'm assuming, is it's sort of tricking the power supply into full power mode. Remember, the sideband on, for, on PCI uh, 5 is supposed to be a communication between the graphics card and the power supply. And all power supplies today are dumb. They're all, they're all stupid. They don't think, they don't talk, they just, even the digital ones, that's just a digital VRM. It just sends power that's requested, and it's like, hey, here, here's your power you asked for. Remember, power supplies don't push power. Components draw power from the power supply. So I see a lot of people are like, oh, 1500 watt, you're gonna blow your stuff up, bro. It's like, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. But now, with having smart communication, the sideband connection is what asks and requests power of the power supply. And the power supply is gonna either say yay or nay, or here's what you're allowed, because this is what I am, and this is all I can give you. And remember, anything over 400 watt or 400 watt and above is gonna have the sideband connector on PCI, uh, or excuse me, ATX 3.0. So you will, you can see in the future that we will be taking a power supply that is too small for something like a 4090, and by the time it's out, probably a 4090 Ti, and see how it deals with those not being correct. Now this isn't a video just about, hey look, here's a pretty cable, because you can see one is hooked up right here, and it, one of the benefits too over this connector, and I showed this in my review, is with, because they have all four of these connectors going into those pins, they have this thick heat shrink slash fabric tape on here to keep the, them from pulling out. Well, this also really extends the bend out farther, which means if this plug is sticking up towards your side panel, there is an issue where, depending on the size of your case, um, it may hit the side panel and put a lot of pressure on that plug, and I'd want to be careful with it causing any damage there. Remember, the pins are a lot smaller, therefore they are more delicate. Um, but what I want to do today is I asked, I asked NVIDIA, what happens 
if you were to take the 12 volt high power connector and chop these pins, like chop these cables, what would happen? And the, the answer was, I don't know what would happen. So I went, you know what, we're gonna find out what's gonna happen. So what I'm gonna end up doing now is I'm going to take, see, it's not even a part of the actual strand, it's just separate cables that they literally have zip tied down. So you can see there's the separate cables right there. I am going to just cut it and cap them, put the little tape on the end so they don't touch anywhere. I wanna see, what does it do? Does it give us less power? Will it power up at all? Because there is a little logic board inside the PCB that's designed just to handle the communication of the sideband. The assumption from my contact in NVIDIA when I asked that question was like, they think that it may not fire up at all. And the reason why I'm gonna cut this cable is Corsair sent us a bunch of them. Sorry, Corsair, I'm, one of them is being dedicated to science today. Um, but we have a few other things I wanna talk about. One, let's get our name on the leaderboard that we can start some friendly competition amongst the other YouTubers that happens every single time. And two, I wanted to do this today with the Strix, but you'll notice the FE is on here. This particular rig right here is the 7950X on the uh, ASRock X670E Tai Chi motherboard, but the Strix absolutely refuses to initialize on this board. This board even has a BIOS update, specifically mentions fixes problems with RTX 40 series. However, I cannot get an image to come out of this card with it on this board. Even going into Windows with it booting on the onboard. Thank God there's onboard video with the 7950X and all the new Ryzen and stuff. It's really awesome for troubleshooting. I just took the HDMI, plugged it into the motherboard, into the monitor, and was able to get to Windows using the onboard graphics on the, the CPU. And then looking at the device, um, code 43 basically was just like, it, it, there was no communication with the graphics card at all. It knows there's one plugged in, because it senses power going through the PCI Express slot. However, it doesn't work whatsoever, but the FE does. So I suspect, I do have some Asus uh, motherboards for um, AM5. I'll try this on one of those. I bet you anything it works fine. But I, I have a feeling there's probably a VBIOS nece update necessary on this graphics card. So a fair warning, if you were like, I'm gonna get a Strix, and I'm gonna put it on a Tai Chi, you may not get an image. So thank God the FE works. Otherwise this video was gonna be quite interesting today. It was gonna be more about trying to get it to work, which might end up being a more interesting video if I had something else to try. I gotta reach out to I Asus and see whether or not there actually is a VBIOS update for that. So anyway, I guess we need to get some baseline stuff too because this cable right now plugged in, um, oh, and what I started to say earlier about the heat shrink is this cable here, because it's such a stiff inner core, we can get a pretty tight radius bend on that. So this actually gives you a little bit more clearance than the, this monstrosity. What would you rather have in your system, honestly? I wanna see what the current scores are because when we're filming this, the embargo had finally lifted so people are able to put their scores up online. Um, fun fact, these 3090 SLI scores will live on for a long, long time because SLI does not exist on 40 series at all. So these, just like four times SLI on TimeSpy, still the top numbers. Actually, no, I think SLI LN2 3090 Ti is finally took over, but single card to hit 36,000 is gonna take a while, um, next gen at least. But if we look at single cards, we've already got some people uploading stuff here. We got Lucky Noob, Uploaded a 27338. This score earlier was a 27,000 and just a couple of change. So I think he's he's actively overclocking right now, or at least trying. We've got this guy, I have no idea who that is, with a 25672. And we have Brow Rosa with a 24706. So I already know we'd be number two right now based on the scores I already got. But that was on a 12900K and we know we'll get a little uplift to 7950X. So I just wanna go ahead and get our name on the board. Let's just do that real quick. Um, in fact, I'll just do it with stock settings. All right, 25,718. I think that might get us number two. I don't know, let's see. Compare result online. That'll get us number two already. I didn't do anything except run it. Hey, uh, hey, this guy, if you if you run a, a proper CPU that's not bottlenecking this, you'll be up a thousand points, buddy. I just thought I'd let you know. My FE is a dud. It does not like overclocking at all. I'm definitely not gonna hit any records uh, with this particular one. It's just a complete shit show in terms of overclocking. This one can't even hit three gigahertz. Um, the Strix can, but again, I can't get the freaking Strix to load on this 
board, but whatever. Let's talk about the, uh, the, the pins here. So if you look down, we've got four pins on the sideband, this little connector where it says 600 watt. And you see the far two are occupied, but the two on the left are not. The two on the left are not occupied because of the fact that this is not a uh, ATX 3.0 power supply cable. So the two are not able to talk or have crosstalk or talk back with the power supply in the graphics card. That's what the two pins that would be communicating with each other are. So they're not occupied here because they don't exist. So the two on the right corresp correspond with sense zero and sense one. So the left pin of the two that are occupied, so the third from the left, is sense zero and the sense one's the one on the right. So if they're both grounded, which they are now, which means they're both attached, then it will pull 375 watts on startup, which is stupid, and then 600 watts is the max available to it. So it means it could pull up to 600 watts. It doesn't mean the graphics card will, it's just it's available. If we have the left pin open, so only the right side is occupied, then we'll have 450 watts uh, max power available to it. If the right pin is open, but the left is uh, populated, the ground on the left, sense zero, then we'll have 300 watts if they're both non-occupied, then we'll only have 150 watts total. So that's the kind of performance correlation we should see by depinning this right now. I was gonna cut it initially, but I'm just gonna depin it. Um, so we should see essentially by undoing the right one and being 450 watt limited, we should see theoretically no change. The reason for that is if we look at the, the benchmarks right here, these are the three reasons your card would slow down or not go any farther. Temp limit, power limit, voltage limit. Voltage is what we see every time. So this is why I said in my review, like the voltage slider is pointless, it doesn't do anything, because we got all of our max scores and everything at 100% power limit, which normally we're power limited first, not voltage. So unless we start seeing custom builds of, of VBIOS and stuff that allow us to move the voltage or shunt mods, et cetera, to fool it, we're not gonna be seeing any crazy overclocks and stuff yet. So anyway, we need to depin this uh, plug it back in and then see if we get any sort of change. Like I said, I think Nvidia is mad at me because you know, this FE is a complete lottery dud. So they were just like, give Jade a crappy card, you know. Crappy and 4090 performance don't belong in the same sentence, but uh, you yeah, know. Now, fortunately, these are just ground wires. No reason for anyone to be doing this. This is just us doing. There we go, J science. So there's one. Now I'll put a little bit of electrical tape on that just so I feel comfortable. There we go. So now, we should theoretically see no change. Oh, hey, our limit is maxed at 100 now. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah, you just caught, Phil just caught this. Power limit is totally different this time around on the card. It seems like it's maybe not, because we did the math, the 133% basically brought 450 to 600. So now it's just doing the math, saying, okay, what's 100% of 450? Well, it's 100. Or what's 150 minus 600? It's 450, which is 100. Do I really need to run the test? Because it should run exactly the same because it's at 100. We're not limiting anything. What would be limited here would be being able to overclock. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this real quick. Um, instead of running the test, like the full benchmark, I'm going to run it in windowed mode in a custom. Yeah, see? Voltage limit. Boom. This is what you're always going to see with 40 series. This is why the power slider is, 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 is just completely useless. Look at the power, it's pulling 403 watts. Look at the power percent, see, we're in, we're under 100 at full speed. Look at the core clock, 2745. So let me add 50 to that, yeah, 2790. Again, wattage didn't change. It's only pulling 400, actually. It's below the 450 max it can pull. And you see, right, core voltage locked. So we can't, we can't adjust the curve or anything. It's just completely, these cards are gonna be shipping with a whole bunch of crazy, like voltage or, or power limit sliders are just completely useless. So even by having that pin not occupied and overclocking this card to where it crashes on the voltage that's allowed to it, no issues there. Okay, so now I need to shut down the system and uh, switch the pins. All right, so it looks like we're getting a no boot on the 4090 with the 300 spec. What we noticed is that, like Windows is booted right now. This is temperature showing for the OS right now while it's loading everything in the background. Um, but the card, we noticed the fans didn't spin. Here, I'll shut down real quick and I'll show you live. The fans didn't spin, which we saw with the 450 spec, was uh, you initially hit it with voltage, the fans would spin up and then slow down. So watch, if I hit power, you're not gonna notice anything happen. 
And when I reoccupy the pin for you and I turn back on, you'll see the fans spin up and slow down, the LEDs will come on. I mean, even the LEDs aren't coming on. So what's happening right now is the card itself is not getting enough startup initialization power, uh, which means lower end cards, um, probably 4070s, 4060s and such, will be fine with that. I guess this, is, this, is, this makes um, NVIDIA kind of right. Like if I took out both pins, would it have started? No. Taking out one pin not starting though, in terms of putting it into the 300 spec, it's kind of funny because essentially the card is being lied to right now by unhooking that pin because it, the power is there. I mean, look, all the, all the main cables are occupied. It's getting the full 600 watts. It's just the sideband is telling the controller on board, hey, we don't have, we only have 300 watts. And then the card's going, well, then you don't get video. But that's cool because it means it's not just brute forcing power through it. The, the intelligence side of the 12 volt uh, high power plug is actually pretty neat if, if from a tech standpoint, if you, if you like this level of, of uh, control. I think it's neat actually. So what I'll do right now is we'll do this in real time. I'll just go ahead and plug the cable. I'll reoccupy that pin and then it should fire right up. So I'll take off the gaff tape, take the pin, push the little tab back down, make sure it catches. On the right side that has the, there we go. It's back in there. <clears throat> Plugging that into the power supply. There we go. Now we should see the fan spin. There you go, see? So it's pretty neat because we showed you on that uh, chart, there's an initial power up wattage and then an actual power supply wattage in terms of like the, it's, a, it's sort of like kickstarting or jump starting the card with, with voltage and it's a certain amount look, it's looking for to start up. So there you go. Uh, I, I need to look into why we can't get the Strix card to load up on this motherboard. I have a feeling that, see, there we go, we got video. I have a feeling that if I was to take the CPU out right now and stick it on the, uh, I, had, I do have an ROG board now. I bet you it would work fine because it's all gonna be internally vetted and, and kind of, you know, made to work. It's gotta work in their own ecosystem. But I think this is just an issue maybe between this VBIOS and this Tai Chi and the fact that I'm getting a phone call from someone I don't know. So I think it's just a combination of this card with this Tai Chi motherboard and perhaps even just this monitor. The monitors play a part on this too. Anyway, just kind of playing around. This is the stuff I'm excited about. Again, having all this new hardware to mess around with and do these experiments that are like, what happens if? So fun fact, you know, ATX 2.0 power supply with the proper gauge wire. Look at the, how erect that is. I mean, it's, it's so excited about the performance. But uh, yeah, as long as it's got the two pins on the right occupied, no problems. So, all right guys, thanks for watching. Actually, I think what we need to do is we need to take this and hook it up to like one of the 500 watt power supplies that Corsair has. Let's do it, next video.